was a kid, around eight, nine years old, I really enjoyed going with my father at work. He was repairing computers, what we call computer at that time. There are huge machines that were doing uh, uh, some simple uh, calculation, but they were, for me, fascinating what a machine could do. And I was fascinated, and I still remember the picture of the instrument my father was using to measure current, to measure resistance, to measure the, the, the frequencies there in order to repair uh, those computers. And I was fascinated by the process he was using, the methodology he was using to identify the mistakes and fixing it. So since that time, I'm, I've been fascinated and intrigued by, by science and technology. First, I was attracted by astronomy, the unknown of the universe, the huge the mechanism there, the, the unexplained mechanism that govern it. Then I move into civil engineering, architecture, and understanding how engineers can master the law of physics and the property of material to build such beautiful uh, equipment and, and buildings where we, where we live in. I then moved to biology, understanding the beauty of nature discoveries, the complexity of those systems, and how those systems evolve over time and self-repair, as we learned this morning. And I was then moving into science, and, and I decided to study biology. I, I wanted to become a scientist and, and lead discoveries. And during my PhD time, I, I quickly uh, realized that it's not simply about science. Uh, I, I observed <clears throat> a brilliant scientist during the PhD, and they, those brilliant scientists were struggling to maximize their potential. Either they had the, the wrong projects, they had the wrong uh, professor, the wrong leaders, the, the, the wrong colleagues, the wrong environment, the wrong moment in, in which they were doing the discoveries. And they were spiraling down in terms of both emotionally and professionally, were not able to maximize the potential. So what I attempted to do at that time is say, how can I help them uh, uh, become a better, better scientist? And I have to say during my PhD, it was, was not successful at all. I was not really able to help them uh, uh, improve their, their, their situation. But it made me realize that rather than, than practicing science, my, my, my mission in life or my, what I wanted, what I, I wanted to do is, was to enable science. And, and what do I mean by enable science? And it's something that I want to talk about uh, with you today. Before doing that, I, I, I was, to introduce you to Verena Mohau. She's a logistic, and, and you see the picture of her, and uh, as you seek from the picture, she's a, a logistic chief of a, an Arctic mission uh, that in 2009 uh, was organized. It's called Mosaic, uh, the, 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 the mission. And it's, it's, it was about 300 multidisciplinary scientists that were uh, um, going with an icebreaker ship towards the Arctic uh, for scientific discovery. That, uh, uh, that ship then linked into a, a big chunk of ice and was floating with the ice in the Arctic for a, over a year. And you can imagine that scientists are not really trained to live in, and to experiment in those environments. So you, you ha it's very cold, it's dark, it's, uh, it's pretty dangerous. You may lose your, your instrument with the melting ice. You may have uh, uh, um, a polar bear sniffing around you while you're doing your experiment. Uh, and whereas this was not the expertise of the scientists that were on the boat, it's the expertise of, of Verena Mohaut. And she ensured over the course of the year the safety of those, of those people. She trained them how to handle difficult situations. She ensured the, the psychological status uh, was, was, was properly uh, uh, met. And uh, at times uh, as well, she was uh, ensuring that the polar bear were not approaching and getting closer to the scientists. So her work allowed those 300 scientists to do a generate an unprecedented amount of, of scientific data about, uh, about global warming, about how our, our uh, uh, atmosphere is, is evolving. And no, no wonder that she was recognized by nature as one of the 10 most influential people that contributed to science in 2020. So going back to, to myself, uh, I think that 
scientists and group of scientists are in similar situation like when you are in the in the in the arctic you are facing challenges you're facing risk you're facing adversities and the job that i've been doing over the last 27 years has been leading science and leading scientific groups and as verena was providing safety to the scientists i my attempt was to provide safety to those group of scientists so that they can perform at their best and it has been a, an extremely rewarding experience, a difficult one because I was not successful all the time, far from there. But it's, it's, it's a rewarding experience because you get the results at the end of the day and you see the people maximizing their potential, they're developing, they're becoming great scientists, they're becoming great leaders. And that's really what is rewarding uh, for me in leading scientific, uh, uh, scientific groups. It's about people management, but it's about, it's more than people management. It's, 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 it's about it, it's enabling and putting the right conditions so that science can succeed and can be turned into, into, into scientific discoveries. And I think we have a number of examples this morning of how if those conditions are not met, if they are not properly managed, it, science is not happening. We have to fight it through with your stick, <laughs> basically. And that's what I think having enabling science leader is going to make a difference in, 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 in driving and, and science uh, uh, in the future. So what is my recipe to, to enabling science leadership as, as we can call it? And, and there are three major buckets. Uh, the first one is about people and leadership. I call it the X factor. The second one is about the environment and the thinking model. Is it impact multiplying factors? So, and the third one is around tools and 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 skills and know-how, which is also known as as process. Let me go one by one throughout uh, through through them. First, the most or one of the most important of them, most if not the most important, is about people and about uh, leadership. It's about placing the right skills, the right people with the right mindset at the right time in the right project <laughs> in the right context. And that's easily said, but very difficult to do. And as I said before, I've not been always successful in, in doing this. But you need to do that while providing the, the right context uh, and the right uh, setting uh, that, uh, uh, that enable that scientist to succeed. And I, I, I still remember the example of uh, it during my career of a project manager that was doing an extremely good job as a project manager, but he wanted to evolve. The scientist, he wanted to do more, he wanted to uh, contribute more. So then he, he studied, he made an MBA, and he tried to move science uh, and business with limited success. Until the moment we decided to put him in a, in a project, in a, in a fully breakthrough innovation type of project with a blank sheet of paper with a problem to solve and, and here you go and it was just amazing how that scientist transformed into a brilliant discoverer brilliant creative person his creativity just got exposed and, and deployed and he became one of the major inventor of, of a critical scientific discovery we were performing in that team so and again, make no mistake, I did not much. I just put that person in, in a, I gave him that challenge. It was himself that, that made this happen. It was his, his willingness to do it, his courage to take the risk, its energy and drive to make this happen. So it's, it's really the human potential, what they call the human potential that made that, that difference. And you can be in whatever universities around the world, it's the human potential that matters. When, when it comes to uh, uh, enabling or, or, or being uh, a good scientist. And I came to Armenia for the first time four or five years ago. And the human potential was the factor that it was most impressive for me. The, 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 the level of, of human potential that you have in this country is just, is just uh, impressive. And that made us decide jointly with uh, the scientific uh, uh, background and, uh, and historical uh, credibility that your country is having to put an R&D center in this, in this country so that we can maximize the use of this human potential and also benefit the, the, the society at the same time. The second 
area is the what I say the, the environment or uh, the impact multiplier factor because that is is not sufficient to put a scientist there it needs to be in the right environment so what is the right environment yes you need the, the infrastructure and the physical and, and infrastructure but what I mean here it's more the different thinking uh, uh, the mix of thinking that you need to have in a team to be successful you need the creative people but you need to have the pragmatist you need to have the black hat you need to have the people that make the connection that enable uh, projects that they are uh, and there and the and that mix of uh, the, the the scientist and the mindset and the, the ways of thinking is the one that enables then the scientific discovery to happen but it's not sufficient of the diversity they need to be in a safe environment and why it's so important to be safe because you want the idea to flow to come out you, you want to be the scientists need to be at ease to do that you want the conflicts but constructive conflict, scientific constructive conflict to happen. And you can only have that if it's safe. And you, you want the, the scientists which are known to be introvert, and many of the, the scientists are introvert, you want them to express their ideas because they don't express the idea. And frequently that's the scientists that have the, the best ideas and they have the truth. If you, if you don't have the safe environment, those introverted people will never express their idea. So, it's really critical to have the right diversity, a, a, a safe environment, and the third, you need to be having a stable environment because science takes time and you, you, you cannot change constantly direction, so you need to provide the right direction and maintain the stability in the direction and, it, and you need to provide the time for that science to, to, to happen. The third factor I mentioned before, it's about the tools and the know-how so you need to have the diversity of knowledge the multidisciplinary that's an obvious one and then you need to have the proper communication tool knowledge management tool processes because science it's about the discipline to make things happen in the right order with the right factors looking at the right things in the in the sequence and that's critical to com be combined with the human factor and with the, the right environment and many times in organization, in institutes, we think that just changing the process, I have a new innovation methodology, you can implement it, it's going to work, or having a, a new organizational structure uh, will make the change. Don't, don't, don't be fooled. If you don't have the right human, the right people at the right moment and with the right mindset, then there is not going, it is not going to, it's not going to happen. So at the end of the day, what I want uh, to give you as a message is that for science to be turned into discovery into innovation you need a multitude of elements you need skills you need diversity of people you need the right environment you need to have the right challenges you know they have tools but it's only by orchestrating those factors in the proper way and that's the job of the enabling science leader that you can achieve the result that you want so through an enabling science leader, you can maximize the human potential, you can leverage on the diversity of the people, you provide the safety, the stability that enables great scientific discovery to happen, you provide the processes and the tools so that that is done in an efficient manner. So dare to become an enabling scientist, dare to enable science. Thank you.